And with this, we conclude the course Advanced Jack Sellers. We've learned a lot in this course. Let's quickly recap. So we first started by looking at a container agnostic way of setting up a Jack Sellers application. We looked at the application class and we learned how it's a better way to bootstrap your Jack Sellers application when compared to the Jersey servlet that can be used for a servlet container environment. We learned why the application class was better. Uh, we also looked at the resource life cycle. We looked at how a resource is per request. We also learned how to make it a singleton so that it's one instance for the duration of the application's life. Uh, we then looked at writing custom param converters. We learned what param converters are, and we wrote our own custom param converters for handling a custom data type. We also learned about message body readers and message body writers. We wrote a custom message body writer to do a conversion from our custom data type to text output. Uh, we also learned how to create our own custom media type. We also wrote our own custom message body writer for our custom media type so that the response gets processed. Uh, then we moved to the client side. We wrote our own Jaxeras client. We made get and post requests. We learned about the Fluent API that the Jaxeras client had. We learned some best practices for making these requests. We also learn about the tricky generic type handling on the client. We learn how to handle uh, responses which are generic types. Uh, we then implemented filters. We learned what filters were, what they're supposed to do, how we can use it. Uh, we built a couple of filters. We used uh, it to build REST API authentication. We understood what are the different options we have for REST API authentication, and we implemented basic auth using uh, a filter. Then we also learned at a high level what interceptors are. We looked at the request response flow between the client and the server. Uh, we saw what are the different elements in place, be it filters, interceptors, message body readers, and message body writers. We looked at what the flow is and what the order of these different elements are. And then we also briefly looked at how EJBs can work with our JAXRS resources. Well, that's quite a list. But then again, there's so much more to JAXRS. I encourage you to look at the Java docs and also some of the user manuals for uh, JAXRS frameworks. For example, Jersey has a really good user guide, which covers a lot of the JAXRS concepts. It also has framework-specific concepts, which are Jersey only. Uh, you should be careful about learning and implementing those uh, concepts, because if you were to switch your JAXRS provider to something that's not Jersey, those things would break. But as long as you're restricting your API usage to JAXRS, uh, you know, that user guide is, is pretty good. So I encourage you to do some more research and learn about a lot of the other features that we've not covered in this course. Uh, but for the topics that we did cover, I hope you found them useful. Good luck, and thanks for watching.